I kind of look like a monk in this, or maybe a bat, or maybe a monk bat. That would be a great Halloween costume. Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're doing a part two. We're doing a part two of this video that I will link in the corner or maybe it's here. I still don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're doing a part two. Part two of dealing with a self-harmer, what not to do. So if you're encountering a self-harmer and you want to be helpful, which I guess you want to be helpful if you're a nice human being. So if you encounter a self-harmer, these are things I really think you shouldn't do. So let's get on to it. We have four more for today. Let's get on. So first one is not telling anyone if no one else knows. So in my last video I said that something that you probably shouldn't do is just go around and tell everyone, tell your whole family, tell your whole school, tell your whole uh, group friends, tell your whole workplace. I don't think that's something that is helpful. However, if someone comes up to you and they are struggling and they're in danger, and no one else knows or no other adult knows. I really really think that you need to tell someone that could help them and that have their best interest in mind. So I, I don't mean that if they have an abusive parent you should tell the parents. That's not what I'm saying because they couldn't do anything with it. But if a friend comes up to you and is struggling, I really really think you need to alert someone because if you don't, you, things could just escalate out of proportion and you would have that guilt of not have done anything before. Just imagine if a friend came up to you and told you that they had, I don't know, uh, cancer but they didn't want to get treatment for it and you were the only one who knew, what would you do? You would probably go tell a doctor, you would probably go tell someone that could help them get treatment. So why are we doing anything different for self-harm. Self-harm is a condition that just needs treatment and if someone doesn't get treatment things can escalate way out of proportion. We know that people who engage in self-harm are at a higher risk of committing suicide and being prone to depression, anxiety, all, all sorts of other mental illnesses. So if a friend comes up to you and they're not getting treatment, no one that could help knows, so no adult knows, or no one else knows that could help them. I really think not telling anyone is not a good choice. Now, granted, they might be mad at you because you went ahead and told someone and they probably asked you not to tell anyone, but what do you prefer? Do you prefer a mad friend that is getting finally help and is doing better or a friend that is not mad at you but is deteriorating might commit suicide might suffer needless needlessly when they could get help i really think that in these cases even though it can be hard your friendship with that person is not necessarily what should be prioritized but i might do an entire video on that one day because i don't think i could give you my whole opinion on that in just one video, so tell me if you want to see the whole video on that. So the first thing you shouldn't do is not tell anyone if no one else knows and they really need treatment. So the second thing that I really don't think you should do, and which might be counterintuitive, is taking away their tools, their self-harming tools. So by taking away someone, el someone else's tools, what you're doing is taking away their main coping skill for life. And what's gonna happen if you take away that coping skill without preparation and without their consent? They're gonna become increasingly and increasingly uneasy and that could lead to worse things. Either just getting some other tools because they're not stupid, they know where to get those tools and addiction can make you very very sneaky and then not telling you about it and you losing the connection with them or not finding any tools and having their 
uneasiness just build up and build up all the way to the point where they just can't take it anymore and at that point you have a real suicidal risks, I think. Taking away the tools are just a very very short term solution and I don't think... I, I really see the appeal of it because it seems just so simple. If you take away the tools they will stop and they won't injure the body anymore but I really think it's a very very short-sighted solution. If you're not an inpatient facility where you just can't leave people with their harming tools, you just don't have the choice, I don't think you should take them away. Because it's just gonna work, maybe not even work, in a really really short term and it's gonna just increase the uneasiness and I don't think it would be very helpful. I totally see the appeal of it, but I think it is a very very short-sighted solution that shouldn't be used if you're not an inpatient facility that just can't leave people with their harming tools or if the person is not putting themselves in death danger. So if someone is putting themselves in a place where they could die, then yeah, of course, then you need to take away those because you need to protect the life of the person. But if they're not putting themselves at risk of dying, literally dying, I don't think you should take them away. Because I think it would create more anguish than anything else. Something that I would recommend, rather than just taking away the tools without them being part of the process and without them willing, being willing to, is work with them to get rid of those tools together and not just you as uh, an outside act. I think that would be way more productive and way less dangerous for the person. Again, by this I am not saying that the person should keep on self-harming forever because self-harming is not a big deal. Not at all, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you want them to stop and not being in danger while they're trying to stop, taking away the tools without any supervision and without them being part of the process is not a way that is effective in them stopping and that could put them at more risk than if you just left the tools. Do you see what I mean? I hope I'm not coming across as just self-harm, I don't care, leave the tools, at least you're safe. That's not what I'm trying to say, I hope it's clear. Third thing that I really don't recommend is yelling at them for relapsing. It would basically be like yelling at a baby for falling while they're learning to walk. They're in a learning process. 99% of the time, relapse is part of recovery from an addiction. It's very unfortunate and I wish people could be part of recovery with no relapse whatsoever, but the reality is that it's super rare for people not to relapse at all in recovery from an addiction. So when that relapse happens, yelling at them for them to stop and that you're disappointed at them and that really they haven't tried it hard enough is just not productive at all and doesn't make any sense. They've tried their best, they've done everything that they could, they failed this time, they will do better next time. Of course, no relapse at all would be the best, but it's not super realistic. It does happen sometimes, but it's really not what happens most of the time because addiction is a very complex mechanism to take away and to try to pick apart and stop. So most of the time relapse will be part of the recovery process. Yelling at them because they relapsed will only bring you one thing, them hiding future relapses from you because they don't want to get yelled at. You can express your emotion, you can tell them that you're sad that they relapsed, that's not what I'm talking about. But if you're yelling at the person because they didn't figure it out the first time around and they really didn't try hard enough and they're such a failure. I really think you can see that this is not helpful and this will just not help them at all. Okay, fourth and final point for today, which is a bit more straightforward, is don't stare at their scars. Being stared at in any kind of situation feels weird and feels very intrusive and just not very comfortable. So imagine getting stared at for something that you probably already are ashamed of and is something that is hard for you to work through and 
that was something that was hard in your life, it, it really feels horrible and just try, you don't have to completely ignore the scars and just try to look away every time you, you see them, that's not what I'm saying, but please try to be mindful of your looks and just not be staring at them every time they look somewhere else, because we know you're staring at us, we, we know you're staring even if we're not looking at you. It can be seen. If you want to make them comfortable and you want to make them just more relaxed, try to be mindful of not staring at them because that's something that can make you very uneasy. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you liked this second edition. A third edition could be possible if you wanted to, so if you like this video and want to see a third edition, please give it a thumbs up so I can see that you like this video. If you want to chat with me, you can hit me up on Instagram, link in the description. I answer every DM I get, as usual, and I will see you next week. Bye guys!